What's up, Zox fam? Now, we're going to be getting into some of the characters that a lot of you guys were asking about from the summon session. You were having a hard time trying to find information on these units to better build them. So we're going to be starting out with Alice Golvig, all right? Now, with that, all right, this is a unit that I've seen on a lot of people's accounts that they were just not absolutely building or haven't built yet. And let me tell you, you are absolutely missing out. But of course, guys, if you've already blinked on this video, definitely make sure you like, subscribe for more amazing dislike content. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it so you guys can understand what this unit is doing and why you are missing out for not building her yet. All right, now, Alice is absolutely ridiculous. We're going to start it with her S1. So Starstream. So attacks one enemy and deals 105% attack damage, 10% chance of calling in an ally to assist. This goes up to a max of 120% damage and a probability elevated up to 30% chance for that S1. So yes, if you're looking in terms of I'm going to ask that question, hey, should I be max skilling her? Yes, you absolutely should. It is very, very much so worthwhile and it's not as costly as some other units when you're talking about all three skills needing skill ups but again this is def definitely very very much so worth it and pretty much it's the idea of getting that extra hits in or extra dps to come in that could really affect a lot of different pieces of content if you're using her uh then you have the witch's blessing so if alice can take action at the start of her turn grants attack up to buffed allies for one turn now this is uh definitely a ability that without a doubt just is going to consistently keep going with any other buff you have going on so if you have units at least two three buffers on your team or somebody that's giving some sort of buff whether it's um anything it could literally be immunity it could be defense up it could be anything she's going to be granting that attack up once she goes right uh and then last but not least the skill that absolutely sets her apart from so many other supports is the fact of her having crystal shards so it extends buff durations for all allies by one turn and grants them crit rate up and speed up for two turns and this is on a a cooldown of five turns once you have this max skilled up now the thing with this and what makes it so broken is when you're talking about the layovers and the in-between wait periods between skills what this allows you to do is offset the innate cooldowns that a lot of characters typically have so with characters that might be set to a three to four turn cooldown with that turn now being extended one extra it makes it a lot simpler for them to get their their skills rotated right back around a lot sooner um, because you're not having to wait for that in between time to reproc it right uh, and then that also kind of goes into if you're using different sets like ocean waves so you factor that in you're talking about characters like within like the blink of an eye or a snap of your finger getting their skill back like simultaneously almost when you're looking at how she operates and i would say be, is catered to a team comp now on top of that she has a captain ability that increases ally hp in hollow battle by 30 percent so yeah occasionally you will see her in hollow battle being used as a lead um especially on teams that have like really good buffs and if they're fast enough they they definitely can they can get you they will clap you all right now let's go ahead and move on into her relics now the relics we'll be using is going to be ocean waves with the sword of avatar in terms of the actual stats main stats we'll be focusing is going to be hp bonus and hp bonus with speed now you could actually consider doing this with defense percent um, another set that works extremely well with her is going to be windwalker obviously that's just another ideal set for a unit like this now when we're looking at what i'm currently doing the reason why i have the hp bonus hp bonus is because i have so much in defense bonus um or defense yeah defense bonus um per percent in my subs i actually relic boosted and did a couple of other things had you know things roll into them uh, i really didn't have to like worry so much about that so i really would say that it all depends on where you're at in the game and what you need but she's pretty okay with what i have and i would say this is pretty a pretty ideal build I I would just want to get a little bit more speed uh the other thing too you would want to keep in mind is that alice does not necessarily need to be going first she actually shouldn't be going first she should be going after your units proc their buffs um and that's just so you can get the full utility out of her s3 because otherwise you wouldn't be getting anything out of it and that would just be a waste really right um so yeah that's what i would ideally build for her um just to kind of get that extra um hits coming in from the calling assist uh and as well as the cooldown on her s3 so that you can be able to just continuously have that opportunity to extend buffs on your entire party now if we go here 
and we go to our resonance. Um, I know some of you guys are going to ask about this. Easily goes into HP, all right? Uh, primarily because of the fact that once you get, like, for example, if you do, um, I would say you would do something like the accuracy for her, so the target constraints. I would definitely say the crisis response is really solid to have on her. And then, of course, the hasty action. So if there's an ability on cooldown, speed plus 10. So that just gives you an opportunity, again, to get her to rotate a lot quicker. Now, that's if you have, you know, the resonance, but again when we have gotten the side events as of late they have been given the opportunity to get a free resonance so i would definitely say that typically your shimmer units are going to be more than likely the units that you aim for for these um especially out of the four stars um that you aim for getting those resonant points for whereas like with the five stars that's a whole nother ballpark but even then you would still more than likely be doing shimmer units over your other ones if you do have um you know you know, a shimmer unit to begin with, right? So that's what I would aim for in terms of her resonant skill tree. Um, and then of course for Ascension, I went all the way. I was like, you, got, you, you gotta go all the way if you're gonna get Alice. You get extra defense, you get speed, uh, and you also get HP. So it's very, very important you at least get up to five because that additional speed is gonna be very, very important to, um, you know, a lot of different scenarios that you might use her in. So that is pretty much going to be that for her entire build. Okay, so we're going to be using the VR Battlegrounds to actually kind of give you a little bit more of an understanding of how this unit works and some good pairings. Now, um, we're going to start off with some that I know for sure that a lot of people probably aren't really necessarily hip to, but one that really works extremely well with Alice, for example, and you might see it come up occasionally, is actually going to be a Nicole-Alice combo. Now, the reason why this is so powerful, and yes, this could also work with units like Yasihua. Um, it all kind of just depends on when she uses her invincibility, so so for those that don't know, Nicole actually grants invincibility. Um, and that's one of the things, it's a full team invincibility. That's one of the things that definitely makes her extremely um, powerful. But the downside to it is that it only lasts for one turn. Pairing her with Alice actually allows her to make this ability last for two turns, uh, making it the only AOE invincibility that could last for two turns, which is just kind of ridiculous, right? Uh, now, another unit you'll also have as well is units like Catherine. Uh, Catherine will just leave her right now uh, but Catherine also offers you standoff um or yeah standoff when you're talking about um preventing your characters from dying it you it also is an ability that lasts for one turn so with pairing with alice then you'll be able to get that standoff to last for at least two turns which is extremely powerful right um of course other great combinations we have the Hawia. uh we'll throw a dps up here we just throw Gaius in here it doesn't really matter but anyone that she gets paired up with she can pretty much uh extend her buff which ends up being extremely powerful right so we're gonna go ahead i think my i think my um my dahalia is actually faster so we're gonna go ahead and do that now keep in mind that she does offer a crit rate up in speed so not necessarily the best in terms of overlapping with the halia but like with any other unit that's not giving those same things it ends up being really really nice but if you see right now we have all these buffs currently on crit rate up we have the attack up uh we have the automaton um as well from the sh for the shield so let's go ahead and use her s3 now you see we get the increase now on the adamantine. We have the increase on the crit rate up. And then we also have that increase on the uh, attack up. And now we have speed up for two turns. So granted, I would say normally you would want your Nicole to be going faster. She should have already had procced immune, um, invincibility. But that again, we'll get to that when that time comes. So let's go ahead and just do this just do soul guard the other thing too with like gaius any buffs that he gives himself or whatever she's able to extend that as well so it ends up being a very 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 freaking powerful thing so let's go ahead and run that back All right so this time what we'll do is we'll actually allow we'll just s1 it we'll s1 it so we'll let the enemies kind of get their little turn here let's see if we can get the assist the proc off so uh what we'll do here actually we'll go ahead and do this and that just gives us the opportunity to block some of that damage and then alice should be rotating back around really really soon so you'll at least see it on a couple of the units here this isn't perfect but it's it can work right so we're gonna go ahead and push we'll do our standoff so a little bit of damage and then here you see we still have the invincibility on uh nicole and we also have it on alice so when she uses her s3 
you see we get that extension and then now nicole even though she's about to go she still has invincibility for an extra turn and also with that standoff you now have that lasting for two turns so really i mean it does become a buff stripper's dream <laughs> but i would say like when you're thinking about any given scenario if you have your own given like stripper like a gaius or you know single you know aoe nuker um you know pair them up alice to cold like you're talking about some really crazy extensions and combinations so again when we're just looking at like pieces of content that alice is going to be useful in she's useful in desolate she's going to be useful in uh pvp you're going to see her in hollow battle uh definitely in pve content where you need that extra coverage and extension so tt and things of that nature so she ends up being a extremely extremely powerful esper to have onto any comp like like I said, though, this is not a finite, so you could definitely experiment and try out different things for yourself. But I really wanted to have this video out for Alice so that people had a better idea of what this character was bringing to the table. Uh, but that's going to be that, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.